Syngenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. I think most guys would like to make two or three times um, their their money on ROI. So you know, spray t spray uh, costs you ten dollars, plus your application is going to cost anywhere from three dollars if you're just uh, using your own sprayer up to eight dollars sometimes when you're using custom application so i mean if you're if you're thinking a three to one you're spending 15 bucks on average on a fungicide application if you could make um, 45 back and net out 30 i think most guys seem to be pretty happy with that and that that really varies as we're talking about different prices from year to year i mean some years when wheat is only worth four four bucks a bushel it's a different story than when you can maybe get seven seven fifty a bushel What they really have um, impacted the value. If you think back to last year and reuse some examples, real life examples of uh, replicated trials we did across the West for a flag leaf application, we had um, on average 11 bushel response in uh, Calgary, uh, 10 in Red Deer, four at Saskatoon, and uh, six uh, bushel response in a portage. So if we say that averages out to eight across the West, just for um, just to make an average, eight bushels and let's say people were averaging 650 a bushel last year we're looking at what uh, 50 uh, 48 to 51 dollars gross minus that 11 dollar product and your five dollar um, five dollar application so 51 minus 16 you're making 35 dollars in those years when uh, you were down to four dollars a bushel you were probably uh, getting 32 back gross take off the 17 15 16 17 and you're only making 16 or 17 bucks an acre so every every obviously every um, dollar a bushel wheat goes up just makes your return that much better yes pretty, um, obviously the main thing when you're put on the fungicide is you want to you want to be making sure that you are spraying for a disease you don't want to just go out there and recreational spray but if you know that um a disease is moving in, stripe rust is moving in from the south, leaf rust is moving in from the south, and it's uh, 20 or 30 miles away. You can go a couple days, a couple days earlier. And then, of course, when you get into a class of uh, fungicides called distrobilurins, they do have some other effects on the crop, some physiological effects. Um, they could help uh, enhance the crop performance. A couple of those things are, one, they'll, um, they will stop early senescence, so they will, in fact, uh, you know keep the crop a little bit greener longer throughout the grain fill period the longer you can keep that crop the top two top three leaves green as we get into head fill obviously the more yield you're going to get and traditionally with the varieties with the maturities we have in the prairies uh, we're not worried too much on an average year of making the crop stay green for too long and also the strobilurins can help a little bit with water use efficiency and they can also help with some efficiency uh, use of, of nitrogen but the main bang for your buck with fungicides is from the disease control well i think that um, growers need to make a plan at the start of the year and we know the uh, the infamous uh, disease triangle that actually serves us very well when you think about it the disease triangle we're talking about uh, three things we're talking about pathogen we're talking about host and we're talking about environment so it all starts with the wheat that you're seed that you're seeding that you're growing and that would be the host so is the wheat that you've seeded going to be a, a host susceptible to tan spot septoria mildew or rust stripe rust or leaf rust so that's uh, question number one then is the pathogen actually present is your rotation short um, do you are you cereals on cereals or cereals every second year where there's a high a high chance of any of the leaf diseases or fusarium being an issue and then of course the weather is it being dry last last year in this particular area from june the 15th all the way through to august the 15th i think we only got 19 percent of normal moisture and so we had fungicide trials out and uh, even though we had susceptible varieties um, even even though they're susceptible to rust and to uh, tan spot septoria and fusarium we only have got one and two bushel responses to the fungicide because the disease triangle is saying there's no pathogen here and the weather is not conducive to that disease um, being an issue so you really have to believe in the disease triangle and that's a tough call sometimes the hardest call to make as a grower or, or an agronomist is to not to spray because you don't want to miss something do you
I think it's really helped. There's so much uh, good information out there now that is so easily accessible compared to the 80s and 90s when there was lots of great information out there. But how did you access um, the researchers, the people who were in the know now with the internet? I mean, you can go on and uh, track uh, the rust tracker from USDA and see where the rust is blowing up each year. That's really handy so you can plan your, uh, your strategy for if you need to spray or not at flag. Twitter is actually turning out to be a great tool, I find. I follow a lot of people on Twitter and uh, people more and more have uh, smartphones and just snapping pictures of what they're seeing, what they're hearing, and uh, you can really use that to uh, gather information because information is king. Between the growers out there and the, all the agronomists and the, the companies that are there to support their products, there's a lot of great information you can get through the uh, new uh, social, uh, social network. Mm -hmm.